So just before I present this morning, I just wanted to express my thanks uh, to Mana Whenua in particular for their uh, invitation, firstly, for me to come and tautuku the work that they were doing and uh, for, the, for the way that they've monarchied and supported me over uh, the last few months uh, while I've been undertaking this study. Uh, I really appreciate their expressions of manaakitanga and um, aroha uh, and their, their unceasing support. Also, thank you, thank you to the uh, staff at the Regional Council also for your support and uh, patience and also your trust in uh, the way in which you've, you've you know, provided some freedom for this study, which I very, very much appreciate. So, we'll get into the study straight away. Just a little bit of background. Uh, so, my name's Anthony Cole. Um, I'm uh, Ngāti Kuruki, Ngāti Raukawa Kete Tonga, uh, from the Hora Whenua in Manawatu, a kaupapa Māori transdisciplinary researcher. Uh, my uh, research focus is in the area of cultural well-being and survival, Māori cultural well-being and survival. Uh, I run a whānau business uh, with my wife Rhonda, based around digital publishing and uh, contract research. Uh, work mostly with hapu these days. And today, what I'm going to be doing is presenting for you the social and cultural impact assessment uh, for the tank plan. So, uh, first of all, three key findings from the study. Firstly, risk has been identified for some uh, tank subcatchment <coughs> communities linked with our current minimum flow scenarios, uh, those uh, developed and identified uh, from the work of Ad First Nimo Bell and MEL. Um, I've provided at the end of this presentation some recommendations of how these, uh, this risk might be mitigated or reduced and possibly avoided. And lastly, uh, the tank plan generally and the question of minimum flows specifically touches on matters of social fairness and cultural survival that are of deep concern to mana whenua and local Māori communities. And I'm going to try and just unpack that a little bit in this presentation. Um, so just a thematic overview of the presentation so you can see where we're going. First of all, I want to tackle the question how reliable these are results. Um, the question of uh, social and cultural assessment method, look at the results, and then we're going to spend a little bit of time reflecting on the results, just a little bit of uh, economic history in New Zealand, just to help you sort of appreciate the nature of those results. Drop down then into some consideration of the Hawke's Bay regional eco economy in terms of its stru structure and issues of social fairness, and lastly, <coughs> a summary of findings and recommendations at the end. So let's just get started. Um, how reliable are these results? Now, I put this slide in here just to make the point that when you're undertaking research of this kind, it kind of spirals and grows through three different stages. Typically, you've got the kind of scoping rapid assessment level at the bottom. You can get up to a type of research that you use for management, decision making, and finally research that is used uh, in a court of law that needs to be legally defensible. And each of these different approaches or levels of research requires a different approach. This one can be done quickly and involves a low level of cost. This is more adaptive, takes more time as a medium to high level of cost. This one takes a long time and a high level of cost. Okay, So this, what I'm about to present to you this morning, sits down here on this bottom level. Um, uh, we can certainly improve it, Okay, but given the constraints of time and budget that we have, um, this is about basically what's been possible. So with that in mind, I just want to give you an assessment of my kind of sense as a, as a researcher of the um, accuracy of what I'm going to present to you today. The theory, first of all, is based on international publications that's well established that, have, that I've applied here in New Zealand. So I'm pretty confident there. I'm going to use um, uh, economic time series data that's been derived from Stats New Zealand, uh, the Reserve Bank and NZIAR. So I'm pretty confident about that. The catchment boundaries, area unit boundaries, are based on pre-existing um, shapefiles or spatial layers um, that we're pretty confident about. Where, where it gets a little bit more grey um, is, last of all here, the um, application of the area unit data at catchment scale um, is esti estimated by spatial apportionment. And my sense at the moment, with the sensitivity analysis that I've done, is that there's an, a slight overestimation of some of, the, some of the data in this area. However, that is a consistent uh, overestimation across all of the data sets. So in other words, we're comparing a consistent level of overestimation across all of the results. Um, this hasn't come out very well, but what I was just trying to show you here, these are the tank catchments in the middle. These are the area unit bo um, boundaries around the tank catchments and that cross into the tank catchments. So what I've had to do is to clip these spatially and then to <coughs> estimate either side of the clip um, to apportion you know, the, the data either side of that. Unfortunately, Stats New Zealand doesn't yet um, 
uh, organize its data sets geographically in a way that aligns with catchment boundaries. So uh, this is the best that we could do. Last, uh, lastly, uh, uh, I've not been able to get access to the 2018 census data, so I've got results up to 2013. Um, I'm going to present you some population growth projections this morning that are based on averaged uh, area unit growth rates between 1996-2013. And this gives you a kind of, you know, back of the envelope sense of what the, the population is going to do into the future, but this could easily be improved uh, with the use of a dynamic model. But again, that takes us up to the next level of that spiral I was showing you earlier. Uh, there's some variability also in the Stats New Zealand data. It's based around their confidentiality, pol conf confidentiality policies. Not all census questions are answered, you know, in the actual census results itself. And some data is based on sample population estimates. So there's a little bit of uh, question over the accuracy of that as well. 